Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Terry, and this is the Yarn Joy Podcast, episode number seven. So glad you came today to see what I've gotten done this week. Okay, so today I have some finished objects, some works in progress, um, some new books that I bought, and uh, a couple of tips that I've learned for this week. So let's get started. Okay, with my finished objects, I finally finished the mermaid blanket that I've been working on. I think I sh in my very first video I showed you, first episode video, I showed you when I had just started it. And I mean, I had this long strip and it was just very, uh, just a few rows on it. So each week I was showing you how much I've gotten done. Well, I'm finished. <laughs> so here it is. It's open at the top. And the back is open so you can wrap it around yourself until it gets to about where your knees go and then you put them in this enclosed piece and of course the bottom has your tail the mermaid tail I use the variegated yarn for the mermaid tail um, the colors I used was simply soft uh, Karen and it was a uh, pagoda which was this one, Limelight for the green, and the variegated was Peacock Feather. And so I just used the Peacock Feather for the tail, and I held the yarn um, doubled to get the tail fin. Okay, so there's that. My next finished object, um, I had just a few little balls of the yarn left over from the mermaid tail. So I decided to include with the mermaid blanket a little stuffed mermaid. I think she turned out really cute. I think she's focusing. There it is. Okay, so what I did is I used pagoda for the tail fin, and then for her little top, that's the limelight, and for her hair, that is the variegated peacock feather that I use for the hair. Um, this is the first time I've ever done hair on a doll, I think, and so um, it didn't turn out perfect. I'm not absolutely perfectly thrilled with it, but I think it turned out pretty cute for my first try. <laughs> and I'm just going to include this with the blanket, just as a bonus. <laughs> okay, and uh, my third finished object that I made this week is a phone or tablet holder. And here it is. The yarn I used was Joanne's um, Big Value yarn, I believe, or the Big Value Simplicity, Big Twist Simplicity, I think. Anyway, in denim. And uh, the red is just some super saver that I had. Uh, so anyway, you make this uh, rectangle uh, tube, stuff the tube, pinch the end on this side, and then you continue from the bottom and you made this other little piece. And what you do is you put it on the table and you put your phone or tablet in the little crease area and it stands up quite nicely. Uh, it is a larger size than for my phone because um, it's going to be for, uh, I mean it could be used for a tablet um, as well. But it stands up well on the tabletop so I was very happy with that. When I was first making it, I was thinking, oh, I don't know, it just don't look like it's going to stand up, but you have to be patient with it and go ahead and do the entire prep pattern, and then you will find um, that it does turn out well, and you don't, I thought maybe I would have to uh, insert some plastic canvas or some type of stiffener or something in the back, but I didn't. It was just the polyfill, and it worked out perfect. Okay, and let's see, my fourth finished object. Uh, I'm surprised it's not still warm because I just finished it just a little bit ago. But it is my Snoopy bag, crochet bag that I made, or project bag, or whatever you want to use it for. It's got a zipper top. And I even put the zipper pull, whoop, he's upside down, <laughs> zipper pull, the little Snoopy zipper pull that I made last week and I showed you. And it, anyway, it's got a handle. I had the little Snoopy head on there. It's got a zipper opening, and I lined it with some red fabric. Turned out good, I think. No problem. Once I had the pieces um, cut out, it, it um, 
stitch together really fast. So I'm going to be using that for some of my upcoming projects. Okay, uh, and that's my finished objects for this week. I spent a whole lot of time um, on the mermaid blanket because I wanted to go ahead and get it finished so I can um, give it to the person that's wanting it. Okay, um, my whips for this week, my works in progress, is I'm still working on the Stitch Your Library um, challenge that I'm doing uh, from this book right here is from Loops and Threads. It's the Baby Blocks. The book's called Baby Blocks. I got it at Michael's. And um, the, the, the uh, blanket I'm doing is called the Patchwork Puzzle Blanket. And let's see, here's a picture. Just to remind you what it looks like. Okay. And I've got, uh, I had some of the squares done. I got a few more squares um, done for this week. I think now I've got enough that's, that I can... Um, start stitching some of them together for so next week I'll have I'll have them uh, stitched together more so that way you can see uh, more of the outcome and what it's gonna I mean you know what it's gonna look like <laughs> so I'm stitching away on that I've been uh, putting that in my Wizard of Oz bag which is right back there that I made and uh, I'll be telling you a little bit about that and just a little bit in my tip section Okay, uh, another work in progress that I'm working on is the, oh, the use, my challenge for myself to use up scraps, and so this is my use your scraps section. Um, I made another square of the Moroccan window square. There's my new, here's my newest one right here. And like I said, you have a main white, I'm used white for my main color, and then you have uh, different rounds uh, of different colors, you know, just to use up scraps because it's a single round. Um, so now, in all, I have four, four squares. Let's see if I can hold them up here. I have a blue, and then an orange, and then I have a green right there, green edged and then the yellow. And then I'm going to do one more on the end and I believe it's it's either going to be a red or a purple. And then uh, then I'll have the width. I, I believe I'm going to do uh, five squares by five squares. And, and I'm doing the join as you go method that I used for my daisy square blanket I showed you a couple of weeks ago. Um, because I, I like that I can just join them to go and you can see them grow growing and, and you don't have to do the, all the whip stitching and stuff at the end. Uh, with the patchwork puzzle blanket, the baby one I just showed you, uh, I, I think I am going to go ahead and just whip stitch the, the squares together because I think it'll look nicer that way. Okay, uh, my third work in progress is the uh, the gift that I am making for my older son who's having a birthday in just a few weeks um, and this is uh, Donkey Kong <laughs> right there is his picture I think he's gonna be very very large <laughs> because all I've got so far is a foot <laughs> this is one of his feet and it's a paid for pattern on Ravelry and um, so far it's going okay. Uh, I had a little bit of um, problem reading the pattern, uh, but I figured it out. It wasn't too it wasn't too difficult. You know, sometimes you try to read too far ahead in a pattern, and you think, "What is he talking about?" But then once you get to that step, you know, when you get to that row and you see what you've got to work with, you're like, "Oh, okay, I know what what he's talking about. How to do next? How to do it next?" You know, so um, so that's going good. Um, I need to work on that quite a bit this week because um, his birthday's coming up and I want to make sure I have it done in time. And so the a fourth work in progress um, really uh, is just that I'm going to still work on small scrap buckster projects. Uh, I've got a whole passel of them <laughs> that I have um, collected and put in my Ravelry library. Um, and I'll be showing you different small I items like I did the phone stand and, and different things. Um, a few more ornaments I found that was really super cute that I want to put together and make. And, and so uh, I'm sure I'll have one or two little small objects also uh, among besides the ones that I'm working on right now that I can show you for next week. 
Okay, so I also have um, three books that I bought recently that I wanted to show you. Uh, this first one is something I just I picked up at Walmart. Um, it is a leisure, leisure arts book and it's called Embellishment Stitch Guide. Um, some of y'all may even have it already. Um, I thought it was really nice. It's got quite a few appliques, uh, patterns for appliques and, and motifs. Let's see that you can add to things and uh, one of the main reasons I did buy it is because it has this section that's called braids and cords and I thought that would be good uh, since I'm doing these uh, project bags I thought it would be good to have you know a trim and stuff on the bags in different areas and I thought those cords and things would be cute to put on there um, and then my, the next book I want to show you is a book that I picked up at Michael's, no not Michael's, Joann's, and it's from Annie's Crochet, and it is called Baby Blankets and Toys. I thought these were really cute. It's uh, five, <laughs> yes five, <laughs> five blankets and each one has a coordinated little animal that goes with it and you use the same yarn color as the blankets that you're doing. There's a pig right there and no I'm sorry that's not a pig that's a bear. <laughs> that's a bear. That's the pig sorry. <laughs> And you have a puppy and a rabbit and a cat. And you can interchange them, you know, whichever one you want with which pattern. Just, but it's showing you how you can use the same yarn to make them coordinating together. Anyway, I thought it was a ni it would be a nice book. Um, the eyes on the stuffed animals are things that I haven't done before. They're embroidered using look like a satin stitch on the eyelid to make it look like it's got sleepy eyes, you know. And um, that will be interesting because I haven't done that before and I'm hoping that the um, the directions are very clear. I really haven't looked at it that closely yet to see if the, if the instructions are clear as far as helping me um, do the eyes like that because I think that's going to look nice. And it'll be baby safe because it's just uh, sti the eyes are stitched on and you won't have to worry about um, the babies pulling things off or being a choke hazard of any, any sort. Okay, and the third book that I have that I want to show you is called Every Which Way Crochet Borders. And I believe I ordered this from, off of Amazon. And it's a very nice book. I really like the way the book is even constructed because it is a uh, spiral bound. And so that way it will lie flat uh, to whatever uh, page you need to um, where you're looking at. And it says it's 139 patterns for customized edges, which I thought was really nice. I haven't used any of them yet. There's tips in the front that is for um, showing you how to, you know, apply the borders onto your blanket. Um, and uh, like I said, there's there's 139 patterns, and I think some of them are very nice. I'm looking forward to uh, trying them out. Uh, I don't know if you've known from some of my other projects what I like to do. Uh, you can see it this right here on the on this blanket here on the my chair. Um, that's a scrap blanket. But what I like to do um, when I make stuff like that is is I have other books that are squares, um, and so I'll make squares, um, pick out a few patterns and coordinate them together, stitch them together. I believe the way, what that blanket turned out to be, or started out to be, is the center square I did, um, I had it for a long time, I think I, I it was some other project that I was going to do and, and it just kind of languished and 
I forgot about it and I found it and I just had that one square but I still had some of the yarn that that square was made up of and so I just built upon that and I found some smaller squares and I kept adding uh, around it um, until I got a good throw or lap gan size and then I used a book like this one to pick my border out to um, finish it off tie it together um, and so when I found this book I thought well uh, I, I thought I would put that to good use since I like to pick out borders to do that okay so let's see that's about all the, of the new books I mean of purchases that I bought um, I do have a couple of tips uh, an experience that I had this past week um, I um, had to go to the grocery store because we were out of everything <laughs> and um, so I got up early and went to the grocery store and got groceries and my son uh, was wanting to go my my younger son that um, still lives at home of course uh, he's 14 he's going to be 15 next week <laughs> so happy birthday to him uh, he was wanting to go down to the neighborhood pool uh, that morning for a couple of hours uh, to swim and so um, as soon as I got I got up and I went to the store really early and as soon as I got back from the store it was almost time for the pool to open so I had to run rush in and we got the groceries put away and then head out again to go to the pool and um, I always like to take uh, a crochet project or something that I'm working on to work on while I'm there while he's swimming and so um, a tip that I have is uh, one good thing about trying to stay organized with your projects is I didn't have time to come into my craft room and, and think okay well what do I want to take and and what do I need what color do I need of this and what do I need of this and which hook do I need it, it I had this Wizard of Oz bag that I made here and um, in there I have this project the the uh, patchwork square that I'm making and so all of it all the squares are in there the pattern book is in there I have a side pocket that I have scissors and um, my hook that I'm using for it and so it was already in there and zipped up and so all I had to do was come in here grab the book and then take off so um, that's a tip I always have a go-to bag or or to-go bag I guess you'd say just like you're having a to-go bag at the restaurant or whatever um, I always have a to-go bag ready with everything you need in that bag to work on something because you never know when you're gonna have to go somewhere and, and you think oh man I, I could have brought one of my projects to work on because here I am sitting you know and so that's a tip um, that I've been trying to use my for myself and uh, that was just an example of of uh, something that really happened to me um, this past week and another tip that I have is to um, always um, m take notes or or s some way to um, how do I say to put the hook what hook you're using for that project because the problem that I had is is I'll, I'll work on a project and it's something that maybe I, I put away for a while uh, but I needed the hook for something else and so I'll think oh I'll remember what hook I use you know because a lot of times I don't use the hook that the pattern calls for you know maybe I want it to uh, be a bigger project so I'll go up a couple of hook sizes to uh, make so make sure it's larger than than uh, or larger large enough from what I what I need it for or I might go down a few hook sizes because I changed the yarn or I want to make it smaller than what it's calling for you know I may want it to be a car seat blanket instead of a crib blanket you know anyway so I'm, I'm really trying to get in the habit of either if I have a paper um, you know um, physical pattern to write down what hook size I'm using because a lot of times I'll forget <laughs> and um, I have a perfect example of that is because um, the the um, the daisy blanket that I just finished 
Uh, I had started that before I started videos and I had done a few of the squares and then I had put it up but somehow I guess I had gone in there and got the hook because I needed the hook for another project or I don't know what happened but the hook wasn't in the project when I picked it up and wanted it to do to uh, start making the squares again and so I thought I knew what hook size I used and so I completed square held it up to the previous squares and it was too big so I ended up having to rip it out and start over with a smaller hook so uh, f that is an example of how I hopefully learned my lesson about that and um, that I will either write on the pattern what hook I used like the baby hats that I did um, a few weeks ago um, I wrote on the pattern what hook size I used because I did end up having to go up two hook sizes to get gauge and so if it's something that you're going to want to make again in the future and um, it's always a good idea to write the hook size down and if it's something that's on the computer or um, on your phone or you know uh, that you didn't print out well then even maybe have a notebook of sorts you know I have a notebook here and uh, this is notes I'm keeping for my videos that I make but um, it's also good to maybe keep a record of the things that you've made because you may have a project like the mermaid blanket or you know something that you made and then say oh I'd like to make that again I wonder what hook I used or you know that sort of thing and another another tip about that is you could also do this I got the, I'm sure somebody else has come up with the idea I, I don't know where I got the idea but I just thought of it I guess and and um, my husband got me these little tags from I think it's like office supplies because I think you use it maybe to put on keys to label keys and things and this is just um, paper on the inside of these little rings not paper cardboard I guess or something and so I wrote a hook size see it says G I think you can see it I've got one here you can see better that's a J and you can actually clip this to your work either to hold the stitch uh, if it's you've got a live stitch there that you don't want to lose uh, that don't get, won't get pulled through so that's an idea maybe you can use uh, to remember what hook you were using for that project um, so that's really all my tips um, I've just been working on um, these different projects and having a great time doing that but I'm also uh, beginning to do some more homeschool planning for this upcoming year uh, so that's what I've been working on also is my assignments uh, for the upcoming school year as well so I hope everybody's having a great summer and um, uh, I appreciate all the comments I cannot believe uh, the subscribers that I have now I'm so excited um, that people would want to watch my videos um, and share my pro share with me the joy of the different projects that I'm I'm doing um, I'm enjoying everybody else's videos as well uh, thank you so much for subscribing and coming back and watching my videos and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe um, and come back each week and see what I've gotten done from the previous week and see what I've been up to well I guess that's all for this week thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week bye